Okay, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator X. We're currently in the PMDG 747, and today we're going to fly from Amsterdam Schiphol Airport to Milan Malpensa. It's a nice day, and we are going to be demonstrating how to use the flight management computer, as well as use the autopilot coupled to the management computer to uh, basically do the entire flight for us. So we're good part of Amsterdam Runway 36 Center. That's where we're sitting now with the aircraft currently off. We're going to follow the standard instrument departure procedure with a Nogina transition. So we take off from Runway 36 Center. As you can see, we're going to make what's basically a big U-turn uh, heading south. Then we're going to transition at EH 36 to this flight path here. And it's going to drop us off at Lopik which is the uh, a final fix for the departure. Then we're basically on our own to get down to Milan Malpensa. Now at Milan, we are going to take a standard instrument arrival, star. That's going to have our initial approach fix at Odina, then Suler, Serrano VOR, the Rigan intersection, and finally ending at the Novara and DB. So we have all those. What we also need to do is look up the ILS approach for runway 35 left at Italy, Milan Mapensa. So I'm looking that up. There it is, ILS 35 left. This is the approach plate for 35 left. As you can see, here's the Rigan. Here's the Novara NDB, which we had on our terminal arrival. This is the ILS. Uh, localizer and 3.5 left. This gives us an idea of what we're going to be doing vertically. Coming in at 4,000, transitioning here at 5 nautical miles to 2,300, all the way on down to the runway. So, the first thing we need to do is start up our aircraft. We select the overhead panel and turn on the battery. What that does is it brings up our instruments. What we also want to do is go ahead at this point and start the APU. That takes a minute to boot up and we're going to need that for compressed air to run the air conditioners as well as compressed air to start the engines. Okay, our APU is running. If we go to the overhead panel, we can see that we have generator power available. APU's got two generators. I'll go ahead and put those on the bus. And now a whole bunch of stuff kicks on. The next thing we're going to do is connect the bleed air off the EPU to our bleed air header. Do that by opening the valve. If you're listening carefully, you can hear the air conditioner starting up. That's basically it. The aircraft is now operating on APU power and charging the battery. So we have no warnings and we have four engines shut down. The next thing I'm going to do to make things easier to see is press the 5 key, which will bring up expanded uh, flight displays things a little more clear. What's behind here basically the only thing we're going to not be able to access is the gear lever but uh, we got gear separately. Well now's as good a time as any to do a quick cockpit briefing. This is our primary flight display which we'll be using quite a bit. It shows us our flight path, waypoints and uh, other critical information. This is the primary flight display control panel, which talks, shows range and basically talks about how it's. Uh, That's where you set up what's on here, various options, which I'll get to later. This is the mode control panel, this area here. This is, uh, think of it as the autopilot. It's uh, basically how we interface with the autopilot. It's going to be very important later. This is our artificial horizon display showing our airspeed. This is indicated airspeed over here. This little bug at the top is our current setting. We have it set for 200. That's also called out here. Our ground speed call out. A gyro display showing what direction we're headed as well as an altitude chart with a set point of 10,000 feet and barometric pressure setting or altimeter setting I should say for the, uh, for the altimeter and a V-speed display showing how fast we're ascending or descending. I have some buttons up here that bring up additional panels. Of course the overhead panel we've already seen. Most of the aircraft systems are on this panel. We can view the flight from the first officer's panel. 
We can also view the throttle uh, stand that's uh, between the two pilots. The FMC is going to be very important later on, so I'm going to go ahead and expand it, make it a little easier to read. Like so. What we actually brought up here is technically called a computer display unit because this particular keyboard, number pad, selector keys, and screen actually interfaces with more computers than simply the flight management computer. And this menu page, which you can always access by pushing the menu button, is where you select which computer you want to talk to. In our case, we're going to be spending most of our time talking to the flight management computer. We have an ICAST display. This is the engine information and crew learning system. We have a little panel over here where we can view various systems, engines, system status, electrical, fuel, climate control, hydraulics, doors, and wheels. If you look at the climate control display, you can see that the AP is running and that it's supplying bleed air to all three of our air conditioners. This shows the temperature settings, etc., in the cabins. It also shows the outflow valves for pressurization. On the fuel page, we have fuel pumps running. If we turn on additional fuel pumps via the overhead display, we can turn on the override pumps here and here, and you'll see them come on on the ICAST display. And the little press goes out once they're running. Press means the pressure is low, which usually means it's out of fuel. You can see here, if I turn on the main tank pumps, oops, main tank pumps, you'll see that they come on, but since there's no fuel, our low pressure warning is it's going to stay on. This is such a short flight, we don't even have any fuel in the center tank, so we are going to turn those off. For a 747 between Amsterdam and Milan, that's uh, just virtually over the hill. It's about the same thing as driving your car down the end of your driveway, because this thing has such a huge range. So those are all the displays we're going to be doing. Primarily, there is a comm display, which is where you set up your radios, as well as a chronograph which we use to time our flight. It's also a good reference to Zulu time. So I'm going to move that down here. So now's a good time to go ahead and start programming our flight. Bring up the FMC. I'm going to go through a set of pages here that identify the aircraft and set it up. Basically tell the computer what the aircraft looks like. It's a 747-400, of course. We have aeronautical information data for 2009 April. We're valid from April 9th through May 6th, 2009. Drag fuel flow factors are where you can make corrections to this. This thing is going to calculate our fuel flow, etc., and do a whole bunch of things for us, and so there's some adjustment parameters here. The next thing we have to do is initialize our position. Now, we're using GPS today. Uh, this thing will simulate in the inertial reference system. In order to get the inertial reference system to work, you have to tell it where you're starting, because what it does essentially is figure out where you, how you move so if you want to know where you are, you have to tell it where you started. So you can either t select the GPS position and initialize it, or tell it what airport and gate you're at, and it will go ahead and use that. So, if we go back to initialize or in initial reference. We have a 610,000 pound gross weight. Gross weight is a sum of fuel weight and zero fuel weight. Obviously, zero fuel weight is everything except fuel. So, if we're 610.2, this is a small number with a little carrot versus a large number. What this is telling us here is that this is an estimate, or in this case, a measurement. And what we're going to do is accept that. When we accept that, it's going to take that number, select, subtract the fuel, and calculate zero fuel weight. Alternatively, you could enter a zero fuel weight here if you want to. So we're just going to go ahead and do that to make everything consistent. You enter a reserve term, which is basically where it's going to set off an alarm if you get into the reserves, and 25,000 pounds is enough to do quite a bit of circling. 